Hello everyone. Let's see. Philip says I'm still alive. That's right. Yeah, I was looking at the weather report last night, Philip, and it looks like like it's in the Bahamas right now, but it'll like make it to the East Coast like what's today? Monday? Like they're thinking Wednesday maybe or Tuesday? I'm not sure. Hi Julianne. Let's see. Let's get this a little bit more centered on that. There we go. I was having some issues with the cameras this morning. Hi, Lam. Hello, Beth Ann. Philip, I'm so glad to hear that. Read it, Philip. Are you okay? <laughs> and it feels, I don't know. I'll feel better when Dorian turns around. Oh, for sure, Philip. Will feel bad for anyone that gets hit. Poor Bahamas. Yes, agreed. We'll be in and out of chat, by the way. So if vanished, don't panic. Sounds good. Hi, Ariane. Let's see. Do you know what pencils we're using? So I think I had said Arteza's, but I was staring at it this morning and I think I actually kind of want to go Ergosofts. Um, you know, but I have the comparison charts uh, for for them, but I thought it'd be fitting to go ahead and do Ergosofts. Uh, let's see, uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Hi everyone, I'm finally back from vacation. Welcome back, Kathy. So many streams to catch up on, there you go. Hi Kimberly, yeah, yeah, I think I had initially said the Artezas, but I think, I think we're gonna go with Ergosofts today. Let's see. Hi, Rita. Audrey. Hello. Joe Beth. Hello. Hello. All right. Well, today we are coloring a page that I drew from the instructional pages in the little How to Draw Inky Wonderlands here. I know this is at a different time. We're starting our new schedule. So bright and early 9 a.m. We'll see how this works out. But there's loads of stuff in this book for you to uh, work on. I know a lot of people are like, oh, well, I don't want to, I don't want to get it because I can't draw and everything. Thanks, Audrey. But uh, the fact of the matter is, um, 
there's even if you can't draw look there's something you can color in here but she breaks it down so 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 easily that it's literally step by step I mean look at these shapes for these birds and then she's got branches for you to draw them on so things to use for this is your drawing pencil um, Stedler pigment liners are great for redrawing over this but what we're doing today is a drawing Hi, Kimmy, welcome, is a drawing that I created using her step-by-step -step instructions for the spherical motif. So you can see, you know, start by drawing a large circle, then draw some smaller circles, then turn those large circles into flowers, smaller circles into flowers, and then leaves, and then, you know, fill the gaps, and then redraw in ink, which I did. But then when I turned it into the coloring page, which is this one, I finally have everything needed to join in. Oh, I'm so glad, Rita. Um, is I actually redrew this in my iPad. Like I brought my drawing in and then I traced back over it because I really wanted it to have nice clean lines, especially if we were going to be turning this into a coloring page for everyone to download that. And my pigment liners, the ink was dying on them. So I had like a lot of lines that were faded and everything. So once I did everything, then I took it into my iPad and I redrew it so it's nice and crisp. Uh, let's see. Do we have any other announcements? Anything? Oh, I started working on this page. I actually took it out of the book because we all know me. I like to take them out of the book, but I figure when I'm done, I can kind of put them together like this. But this is for Sammy and Laura and Honor's um, kind of uh, color along. Way, way, way out of my uh, comfort zone, but interesting nonetheless. It's it's not my usual. And I know I, like most T-Rexes are like green or brown or anything, but I'm using like pinks and yellows and reds and purple. There's some purple in here too. <laughs> Thanks, Kimmy. Okay. Now I'm still kind of somewhat getting over my cold a little bit. So if I'm coughing, thanks Rita, I apologize. Okay. So let's dive on in here. So you can see it, you know, it looks like a Johanna drawing, mostly because I followed her instructions, but you know, it's got a little bit of my own tweak. And you seriously knocked that out of the park? Oh, thanks, Beth Ann. All right, let's open up. That looks great. I did the buddy color for that too. Oh, awesome, Joe Beth. All right, so I've got my handy little pencil roll here. And this was made by um, a woman named Ahum for Hope. Um, let's see, do I have this in here? Let's see if I have a command for it, let's see. Pencil wrap, maybe? Or maybe pencil roll? Let's see if Nightbot wants to work today. Um, either way, I put the link in the description uh, below for if you want to check out her. It's, oh, there we go. Pencil roll, that must have been it. Uh, anyway, I got this wrap uh, on Etsy. But we got all of our choices here. It's just the 36 count set. It's kind of nice to look at, a nice little, nice little rainbow. Okay. Oh, and this is the pigment liner that I use. It's just the Stadler pigment liner uh, that I use to draw the uh, illustration. But I kind of feel like it's, you know, still a, a JB illustration just because, you know, we used her, her instructions here. All right, let's grab our color chart. Okay, let's find, I was working on the Prismacolors yesterday, so I still had it on that. Oh, here we go. Right here, next page. Go figure, I had it marked. <laughs> All right, so let's see. What do we want to do here? Colors, 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 colors. I'm leaning towards a blue for this first flower, but you guys have to understand when you choose your large flowers, that's gonna kind of set the tone of the whole page. So you gotta choose wisely. So I am gonna go ahead and choose, let's see, oh, and I'm in top chat, switch to live chat. There we go, hi Kenny, welcome. There we go, live chat. All right, um, so let's go ahead and choose number three and number 30. Let's see, 30, 30, 30, here we go, 30. And number 10, because I always have number 10. Hi, Kate, welcome. 
Okay, do I want to keep any other on hand? Okay, we're gonna grab our accent colors after we lay down our main color. I love this time, I'm usually awake. Oh, awesome, Kenny. That's great. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. <clears throat> Let's go to, <coughs> excuse me, I'm so sorry. Let's go to our comparison chart here. There we are. All right, so we're using number three, which is here. So let's zoom on in. Okay. Uh, so Prismacolor equivalent for number three is 133 and Arteza is number 70. And then we have number 30, Prismacolor equivalent is 904 and Arteza equivalent is 68. Hi Sherry, welcome, welcome. And then number 10, which is over here, Prismacolor equivalent is 915 and Arteza equivalent is 28. Okay, so we're gonna start on this one. We're doing the inner part of the petals. We may do a different color for kind of this outer curled part, but this is what we are going to choose first, okay? So we're gonna get these sharpened here. Okay, there's that one. wrong end of the pencil and can tell I'm not quite awake yet this morning. <laughs> oh, there was a minor oddity with your drawing on the top right flower, bottom of the flower, and a bit to the right. Wasn't sure what was flower, what was background. So top right flower. All right, let's go down here. Let's see. It's possible. I could have missed a line. Okay, so top right flower bottom of the flower, a bit to the right, so like this area here, wasn't sure what was flower and what is background. I'm talking about like this space right here. Yeah, of course, Bethann, definitely. Right here. I think background because the petal stops here and then this would curve around here and then this would curve around here. I guess I didn't add any dots to that space, did I? So it doesn't really signify that it's the background. But yeah, yeah, so that's background there. Under the main petals, there's some shapes. Yeah, I think I just didn't fill it with dots, so yeah. Yeah, it's background. Yeah, I think I just forgot it, Philip. That's all. <laughs> and I might have even had there, and I might have just forgot to put them when I was um, when I was coloring it. Hi, Pat. Welcome. Yes, Kenny, go ahead and email me. My email is. Do I have an exclamation point email? Did I do that? If not, hello at Emily. Illustrator.com. I'll need to put that command in exclamation point email. All right, that's my email there. So yeah, you can email me and I can send you uh, whichever ones you'd like. Let's see, who'd I miss? That's what I figured, no biggie, but threw me off for a bit. Oh, totally, I get that, Philip. Yeah, everything has dots except for that one spot. So what is it? Yeah. Hi, Tracy, welcome. All right, so like I said, we are using number three, number 30, and number 10. Oh, yes, you have it. Okay, perfect, Kenny. All right, so what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're going to color kind of, well, first we're gonna center that. That'd be helpful, right? And what we might do, since it's bigger, we might work on a petal or two and then move on to another section too. Also, I've been trying to think, and I know this is gonna be kind of our morning crowd, but I also know some of our morning crowd is there. Pretty right now so I can color. Oh, awesome, Nelly, welcome. Um, I know some of you are there for the evening. Uh, but 
I'm wondering, what do you think we should color on Friday? I was trying to decide because we're doing things separate. Like we're not going to color this one on Friday because I don't want morning people to miss it. I debated about working on this one on Friday just because it's a work in progress. But it's not really a good color along one. So I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But if you have any good ideas for what maybe we should color Friday, let me know. Let's see. I wonder if Johanna has editors or something to look over drawings for things that aren't clear or need to be tweaked. Perhaps. I've actually wondered that myself. I know that she does a lot of her own stuff, though. Because I know occasionally something gets missed, but I know she does a lot of her own. Okay, so we're going to start with number three. And what we're going to do is we're going to start kind of at the top. And remember, start out lightly. You can always add more layers and go a little bit heavier later. Love to see you color that T-Rex, it'd be awesome. Okay, all right, cool. Well then maybe we'll do, maybe we'll work on that. Maybe we could say Fridays for like work in progresses. I don't know, I wanna make sure that everybody, you know, gets to see something that they want. That T-Rex though, he's, he's something else. He's something kind of like, I'm realizing like I put down a bunch of color and he doesn't really come together until it's all done or blended or, or anything. Like it's, it's way out of my comfort zone to be sure. But sometimes it's good to get a little bit outside of your comfort zone, you know? Get you out of your rut of the same styles. Although I will say that that's one thing that I appreciate about Johanna's pictures is that a lot of them are just very clear cut, you know? Hi, Claire! Welcome! First Kirby on Emily's stream, exactly. There you go. I love how she did non-traditional colors, but seeing how the shading is done would be amazing. Oh, thanks, Beth. Yeah, well, I was looking at them, um, and I was looking at a lot of examples online and everything, and I was just like, dang, all of them are brown or green. I even thought about doing uh, a completely purple T-Rex. It sort of evolved into more a red-looking one, but I definitely chose, like, magentas and purples and yellows. So, yeah, I wanted to do something a little bit different. Claire, is this your first official joining of uh, one of the one of these coloring streams? One of the uh, Emily Illustrator coloring streams? I'm so excited you're here. You now, morning times are so much more agreeable to UK times, to be sure. Which is why one of the reasons I wanted to start doing these a little bit. Okay, now we're going to take a little bit of this. And we're going to color down here, kind of at the base of the petal. Emily, is coloring dark to light a personal choice? Oh, most definitely, Pam. I know that there's... Oh, thanks, Claire. Yeah, that's this is a new addition. I recently was able to upgrade... Uh, the system here and so now I'm able to have the extra little camera um, yeah Pam there's a lot of there's a lot of rules in the you know kind of artist will that oh you should be coloring this to this that to that um, and a lot of it is light to dark but sometimes I'll do light to dark depending on my layers but yeah I kind of color to the beat of my own drum if that makes sense <laughs> uh, yes Kenny most definitely the aerosofts do need a light touch you don't want to start out uh, pressing really hard because they don't blend anywhere. Like Prismacolors are super creamy, super smooth, very forgiving when it comes to coloring. Um, but once you lay down this color, like if I were to suddenly do a real hard line across this, I would not be able to blend that in like at all. Um, but if you start out light, then your colors can come together much easier. These are hard for me to use too, but I'm getting better with them. Oh yeah, they definitely take practice for sure. I color light to dark or dark to light, depending on the type of pencil. Yes, exactly, Audrey, exactly. Aw, thanks, Pam. 
especially if it's a pencil I'm not familiar with, I'd probably go light to dark because it's it's definitely a bit more of a safe zone. Um, but for ones that I am familiar with, I always color dark to light, except when doing skin. I don't know why. I just feel safer starting light. Oh, most definitely, Claire. Oh, yeah, definitely. Just because you're building up that shading. I kind of think like uh, next face cam. I don't know, Philip. That means I actually have to do hair and makeup before stream. <laughs> Hi, Annette. Welcome. Yeah, I mean, I kind of think like the skin tone, kind of like putting on makeup. Like you don't put on your blush or your eyeshadow first, right? You put on the foundation, which is generally, you know, a, a color to match your skin tone, which in the coloring world would be a light color. So I totally get that with skin tone. Yeah, I thought about a face cam, Philip. I just don't know. <laughs> I mean, because then what if I sneeze and I look funny? I'm just saying, a cookie cam. I've thought about a cat cam. Uh, she's not sleeping down here today, but I have a little um, cat bed here underneath um, my little tray next to my desk, and she likes to snuggle down there. I think maybe I'm too loud when I do streams, though. She doesn't like it. She goes away and lays on the bed. <laughs> Hi, Lucy. I'm glad I don't have a face cam. As generally, I do my coloring in PJs with a hair and a bun on my head. Well, you're pretty accurate to what I'm doing right now, Lucy. <laughs> I mean, it's not a bun. But it's a ponytail. Um, it's not quite PJs, but they're definitely comfy clothes. Actually, I've got my, it's got, I don't know if you can tell, but it's got uh, Johanna's, um, here, I'll do it just a little bit, the little hummingbirds on my shirt. Yeah, little hummingbirds. <laughs> says, Tyler says, woo, sorry I'm late. Oh, no worries, Tyler, you're good. Yep, you're never late. You arrive, you arrive precisely. When you mean to. Annette says, Hi, Emily. My fiance printed this for me. You did such a perfect job. Looks like Johanna's. I'll probably color later, but listen on and off. Aw, thanks, Annette. Let's see. A streamer I use, you watch, has a has a pen dribble, so there was a, a gerbil cam. Oh, how funny. Hi, Pat. Welcome. <laughs> I can guarantee you I'm not Bethan, nor have I ever been. That would be just only slightly awkward. <laughs> What paper did I print this on? Oh, I used, I used the Canon matte photo paper. It is an eight and a half by 11 and it's a 45 pound. Now most home printers won't print anything heavier than I think 60 pounds. So you'll have to, uh, you'll have to check your own personal printer. Um, but yeah, this, this is what I use. I also have some paper that I got um, Hobby Lobby was having a sale on it and I haven't tried it yet. Let's see. This is a it's Astra Designs eight and a half by 11. Let's see. What's the poundage? Okay. Yeah, this is actually heavier. This is a 65 pound. So I haven't sent this through my printer yet. Um, but for today, this is what we're using the Canon matte photo paper eight and a half by 11, uh, 45 pound. Do you have a favorite Johanna Basford book? I'm struggling with Secret Garden as there's so much drawing, but I'm hoping the book in October might help me. Uh, so Lucy, my favorite, my very first one was um, uh, Enchanted Forest. And that is still probably, it's probably my favorite because it was my first one, but I liked it because it has a lot of animals. Um, Secret Garden's the really, you know, until obviously this new book comes out, Secret Garden's really the only one that has like stuff to, you know, add drawing to and everything. But if you're wanting something that you don't have to add drawing to, I don't know how much detail you prefer. If you want something with a lot of detail, Lost Ocean has a lot of detailed pages. Um, but otherwise, I highly recommend uh, Magical Jungle, Enchanted Forest, they're all great. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Could you imagine? I'd be so embarrassed even knowing nobody could see. Yeah, I don't think I could, I would chance it, Beth. I, I would be too nervous too. <laughs> Is it possible to put your paper in the whatever you call it? Uh, you're gonna have to clarify for me, Annette. <laughs> Oh, uh, listen, dear, dear. Hello, Emily and group from the UK. I'm so glad to be live on here at Mop today. Oh, awesome. I'm so glad you're here. I'm just coloring real lightly here because the yellow is going to come next and I definitely don't want any harsh lines. Okay. Now we're going to add our number 10. And I'm just going real lightly, kind of going over the blue a little bit. Mm 
There we go. Oh, Annette, thank you. Can we get some cheers and, and chat for Annette for her super chat? Thank you so much, Annette. What a great way to start off the morning. Alejandra, hello, Alejandra, welcome. I always watch your stream, but after it's fantastic to be here. Oh, I'm so glad. See, that was my hope was to do some morning streams to change up the time because I know not everybody, you know, I know 8.30, you know, central time is kind of late for everybody. I know for the UK, that's like middle of the night, so... Emily, are these your favorite pencils to use? Do you use other brands? Um, these are definitely my on the top of my list. I will say since I started using the Artezas, they may have nudged down just a little bit only because the Artezas have a few more choices. But I do like the simplicity of the Ergosoft. So if I were to rank my favorite pencils, um, Okay, I will say Karanda Ash are probably one of my favorites, but because they're such a spendy pack of pencils, I don't use them all the time because I don't want to blow through them. So definitely um, Karanda Ash. And then, hi Karen, says new to your streams, glad, good to catch you live, I'm so glad. Um, but Karanda Ash, and then probably the Ergosoft, and then... I think the Arteza and then maybe the Prismacolors. And Prismacolors are great. And the only reason they're not high up there is just because of their tendency to break, which I'm sure a lot of people have found uh, fairly frustrating. So uh, Prismacolors get moved down the list a little bit, a little bit for that. Um, I have Tombos, but I feel like you have to put too much pressure on the paper to, uh, to get the amount of pigment you want out of them. And I find that my wrist hurts too much after using them. Um, one of these days, I'd love to get a full set of polychromos and weigh in on those to be sure, because I hear lots of good things about them. Um, we are going to go ahead and grab our, uh, number 73. Now, one of the reasons that I'm using this pencil for the kind of, uh, accent shading color goes back to the basics of the color wheel. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. I have the luminance as well. Yeah, aren't they wonderful? Karen Emily has wonderful. Oh, thanks, Pat. See, I love Ergosoft. However, I tried the Art Castle Supplies 120 and they're soft and affordable. Oh, nice. Very nice. I think for me, I find the Art Ergos hard to use because I tend to use a lot of pressure in my color and I really want to go into light layering, but I'm too impatient. Oh, I totally get that. I do not use my Ergos for drawings where there's a lot of open space. In fact, this is on the verge of almost being too big of a space for it just because you do have to use so much lighter hand without creating those those harsh lines and it's it's less forgiving in a large space. So generally, I will save my Ergo softs for something where I want to do um, a small detail. See, I have all ex I have all except work uh, World of Flowers and Inky, but those are my next purchase. I love this blue flower. I love Enchanted Forest as it was my first one too. Yeah, exactly. I love Enchanted Forest. Yeah, Ergo softs definitely take a little while. And if I've missed anybody coming in, I apologize. But what I was saying is, so we're going to be using, like I said, we're going to use number 73. Grab the color chart. And the equivalent for 73... The Prismacolor equivalent is 1033, and the Artiz equivalent is 27. For those of you that are new uh, here, I have comparison charts, which you can find in the files of our Facebook group. Just type exclamation point Facebook. Looks like Kimmy uh, linked it up there in the chat. Um, but I have comparison charts. So what I've done is with the pencils that I have, Prismacolor and Ergosoft, um, and uh, you... So you have the Ergosofts, and then I have the equivalent to what matches it best based on what's in there. I also have one for Prismacolor and Arteza. So if you want any of these comparison charts, they are in the files of the Facebook group. Let's see, Emily, my little boy is watching and would like a shout out, please. His name is Max. Hi, Max. I'm so glad you're here. Thanks for watching. Pat says, been enjoying some of your playback videos, Pat. Have a nice style. Oh, yeah, there we go. Yes, Pat's here. Hello. <laughs> Um, but the reason that I am choosing this color, like I said, goes back to the color. Hi, Epic Art. Welcome. I also learned from you, Emily, is, is can ton of colors with only 36 colors. It's not exactly. Yes. 36 colors makes it a lot less overwhelming. Um, so on your color chart, the basic idea is you have your three complementary colors. Okay. You have your red, your yellow, and your blue. 
And complementary colors are essentially that, colors that complementary color. You have your secondary colors, which are violet, orange, and green. And generally, you don't always have to use black to shade your colors. A lot of times what can work is to use a color that is complementary of the color you're currently using. So for instance, the majority of our petal, despite the yellow, is blue. The complementary color of blue is orange. Now, this is a brown, but it's very much an orangey kind of brown. So, which is why this works for somewhat shading. You could also use kind of like a red orange if you want, but generally anything in the orange family is going to work for complementing your blue color. And if you need help with it, you can find these on just like Amazon. I need to get a link for these for you. Um, sounds good, Anne. And so these are, uh, this is great for trying to figure out, you know, what colors go well together, what you can use to shade. So I highly recommend uh, getting your hands on a color chart if you struggle with choosing your colors. We'll just put that right there. Um, okay, so here's what we're going to go ahead and do. We're going to zoom back in. All right, and we've got number 73. All right, and we're just going to add a little bit here, okay? So right along the base of this petal here, because you can see where this line stops and this line stops, that means that this petal is underneath these two petals. So we're going to kind of do it right on the edges here. And you can press a little bit harder just so you can get some of that brown in there. Okay. You can see kind of how that orangey kind of color works with the blue. There we go. And then we're going to blend it in with a little bit more of our blue after we have it down. All right, so I am pressing a little bit harder here. Then a little bit lighter as I go out. There we go. Now you can see this is folded over, so there's going to be a little bit of shadow on this petal as well. Emily, that is great. I draw, but I want to learn to color in pencil because I use pen. Oh, awesome, epic. Pat says, Emily, are you planning and continuing this picture on daytime streams? That's the plan, Pat. So the whole idea was that I didn't want to... Um, like color this one on morning and then color this one on night because it won't be it uh it's not necessarily fair to those who can only be here in the morning versus those that can only be here in the night so my plan is to do something different for morning and something different for evening so we're going to continue coloring this page ideally i'd finish the whole page on stream uh on wednesday and then on friday we're thinking we'll do we'll work on my um where'd it go because i'm working on this t-rex for um for Sammy and Laura and Honor's color along. So I was thinking I would work on this on stream on Friday. I have these pencil pencils. Oh, let's see. I'm missing something. One second. Let's see. Oh, Desi. Hello, Desi. Thank you for all you do, Emily. I've learned so much. You're a great teacher. Oh, thank you, Desi. I'm so glad. Let's see. Pat says, I have these pencils also. I really need to pull them out because I love how soft they look as I'm still learning to use the softer hand. Oh yeah, this is definitely a, a good pencil to learn how to use lighter layers. Oh, thanks, Epic. Thanks so much, Claire. Yeah, I was a little intimidated about it. I'm not going to lie. It was sitting on my desk for a while yesterday when I was trying to figure out like, okay, do I want to just go easier and use paint because it'll go quicker? Because I mean, that's a lot of detail on this thing. I mean, it's two, and yes, I cut it out of the book. I am notorious for cutting out pages. Um, you know, it's, it's not that one here, but you know, it's a double spread and that's a lot of detail. And I thought, you know, maybe watercolor could work for him, but once we moved to the smaller section, I think that'd just be too fiddly to work with paint. I don't think I'd have the patience for it. So I was just like, all right, Prism Prismacolor seem, seemed the best choice. And then I knew I wanted to do a non-traditional color for him. And it's not super non-traditional. He's coming out definitely more red than he is pink. But I use a lot of pinks and purples in him. But yeah, so that's what I'm thinking is I'll work on that on Friday. Okay. So since this petal is curved over a little bit, we're going to add a little bit of shadow here as well. Okay. All right. So we've got that brown in there. Is this picture from the Inky Wonderlands book? So Pat, this is from, 
Yeah, the How to Draw Inky Wonderlands. And then what I did is I followed the spherical motif um, instructions here. And so I was able to draw it, all, draw it all up. And then I went ahead and moved it in my iPad so I can get some crisper lines. Um, but for those of you curious, uh, first of all, there is a link in the description below as well as, uh, let's see, I think exclamation point inky wonderlands. And that should pop up a link for it as well. This book is going to be out in October. Now, keep in mind, this is not the full book. This is just a little sample. There's like how many pages? Eight pages? Nine pages? I think eight pages. There's eight pages. Book itself is just as thick as like the Ivy and the Inky Butterfly one. Um, so sounds good, Kimmy. Uh, so anyway, yes, this is from the how-to of this one. And it's cool because you can tell that it's like, you know, Johanna-esque, but I feel like it still has, you know, a little bit of my own personal touch a little bit. Okay, so now we're going to grab our number three again. And we're going to go over that brown just a little bit to help kind of blend it in. And we're going to darken up that blue just a tad. So really, so far, this will be technically layer number three. So the first layer of colors was the dark blue, the light blue, and the yellow. Then our second layer was with the brown. Now we're going to go back over with, uh, with these three and, uh, and we're going to create our third layer. And I kind of have a general rule of thumb, unless it's just too small for it, I tend to color in groups of threes, a dark, a mid, and a light color. And that can generally give you a good range if you're wanting to do, you know, like your shading or create gradients. It's a good way to uh, get a nice little range versus jumping straight from a dark to a light. I said, I would have enough drawing during anatomy class, so I want to buy this book. Okay, that's fair, that's fair. But there are places like... You can see, even if you don't want to do drawing, and I'm sure there'll be more opportunities in the full thing, um, but like you can see, this could be something to, whoop, let's zoom out. This could be something to color here. This could be something to color. Let's see, see, she's got these in here. These are all colorable. So there's definitely opportunities to just color. Says, Claire says, is there an app or program you use to scan your sketch and convert it to clean lines? Um, so Claire, I have a Canon printer and that's what I use to, uh, that is what I use to scan in my images. So I drew it up and, you know, uh, covered it over with ink. So I, I drew it up, covered it over with ink, scanned it in, and then, you know, I can take it into Photoshop and, you know, I can up the contrast and lower. So, you know, I'm cleaning it up a little bit, but then I just took the file directly, the scan file and brought it into my iPad. And then I use a program called Procreate on iPad and I have the, the pencil. And so I drew it over that way. And truth be told, one, cause I knew I wanted to have this be a coloring page for everybody. My um, my pigment liners, I hadn't used them in a little while. They were a little bit dry, so I had a lot of like patchy lines and, you know, where the ink was starting to go out and wobbly lines. And so I can, you know, make it look quite a bit crisper and nicer using the Procreate app. But you could always, even if you didn't have that, you could always, Pat says, gotta run, hope to catch you on Wednesday. Sounds good, Pam. We'll see you then. Um, you could always take a picture of what it is that you were drawing, just like if you're using an iPad and a pencil, and then bring it in, and then you should be able to trace it over just fine. Aw, thanks, Pat. <laughs> All right. So we're just going over that just a little bit, kind of toning down the brown just a little bit. Okay. All right. Then we're going to grab our light blue. Okay. Number 30. Also, if you have like a, like a Wacom tablet or something that you use uh, on your, on your computer, that could also work. Oh goodness, Pat! Thank you. Can we get some cheers in chat for Pat for her uh, for her ten dollars super chat? Thank you, Pat, so much. She says thank you for what you do, Emily. I learn something new every time I'm here. Oh, thank you, Pat. That is so wonderful. Thank you so much. We also got some new music for today since we started a new page. 
as I say, as, as the song stops. <laughs> Thanks so much, Pat. It's so fun looking up, see those little colored boxes up there. Thank you so much. Well, this is really kind of what I wanted to. I wanted to be able to reach a few more of you, of you ladies and gents here, just because I know it's limited when I stream at nighttime. But now we're going to be, in case anybody hasn't seen, we are going to be um, streaming now Mondays and Wednesdays, 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. And then Fridays at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. Let's see. Claire says, I'm not a fit with uh, Photoshop, but I may try and learn. Are you going to be creating coloring pages using the Inky Wonderlands techniques? You could create endless different designs and combinations. Oh, most definitely, Claire. Most definitely. I plan to do at least, uh, I'd like to do at least one or two more before, uh, before um, the book comes out, to be sure. Kind of build the hype a little bit, you know? Oh, you could use so many different combinations. And spicy Pat. There you go, Beth. Yay, I'll be able to catch you now. Oh, awesome, Pat. I know we kind of had conflicting schedules there for a little bit. But now with the kiddos in school and everything, that leaves me a couple hours in the morning. And since we have to get up so early to, you know, go. Oh, and this was number 10, by the way, to, uh, you know, get them up and ready for school. It was just like, oh, I can't be staying up late on the weeknights, you know. <laughs> okay. So we're going to zoom out in here so you can kind of see what this petal is like. See, we got kind of our shadow here using our brown. All right, I'm going to drink a water here. Okay, so now let's do this little kind of flipped over part of the petal. I want to do something a little bit darker, I think. So let's grab our number 33. And just for fun, let's grab, let's grab our number 35 and then let's grab, let's see, let's grab our color chart here so you can see. Okay, so 35 and let's grab number 56, okay? So I look up close at the brown and I wonder if it'll work. Then you zoom out and it just takes off the maze. Exactly, right? Sometimes when you're super up close, it's hard to see, especially with the camera because it does get so close. But then once you zoom out, then you're like, oh, okay. It makes sense. It's kind of like the same even with the, with the dinosaur page. So you take this and you zoom in super close and it just got kind of this mess of smudges all over the place. And so it's just like, yeah, that looks, you know, okay. Cause you can see there's a lot of texture to it and everything that I didn't see. But then once you zoom out, you're like, okay, all right. This definitely, this definitely works a little bit. So I always enjoy like taking the large picture of it uh, at the end of a picture because it also, you know, it translates on stream differently than it does. Uh... Oh, thanks Beth <laughs> But yeah, it just, it always looks, I hate to say it, but it almost looks better in the picture than it does on stream because it's taking a picture of the whole thing. You know, you're nice and open daylight and everything. Hi, Beth. Welcome. Okay, so uh, we are using... So we've got number 33, which Prismacolor... Oh, let's zoom in here so you can see. Prismacolor equivalent is 902 and Arteza is number 32. And then we've got number 35, Prismacolor equivalent is 992, and Arteza equivalent is number 44. Oh my gosh, Pat. So many. So, so many. In fact, I've been, so I have a tendency to um, take out my drawings out of books just because I find them easier to work with. So I've got this little thing where I've been keeping all of our finished ones, like here's our rooster that we worked on. We've got loads in here. Um, but then on the back side of it, now I'm not counting the ones that I have in books because, oh my goodness, but I do have an entire pocket dedicated to ones I haven't finished. I think I did this on a whim one night, never finished that. I was working on this one right before I started streaming 
and have not finished it. Gosh, this one was ages ago. I started coloring that one. Another whim where I was like, oh, this would be fun. And then I was like, wow, that's a lot of hard work. Uh, this was another one that I didn't quite finish. This one, I was using Tombow brush pens and you can see I still have this top part and all the shading. It really came back to it. Uh, let's see, what else? Oh, this was just something I was having fun with fine liners. This is like, that was one that didn't work out. <laughs> but they're a fraction of the number of, uh, sounds good, Tyler. They are a fraction of the number of work in progresses I have. I've got so many in the books themselves. Like it's all, it's, it's almost embarrassing. <laughs> Cause before I started doing the streams too, I really never had any incentive to really finish them short of just showing, you know, everyone the finished product. And so, you know, I'd look at it and then I'd take some time. Hi Betty, welcome. And then I'd go back to it and be like, I have, I have, so not that many. Oh, okay. Yes. Loads in the books. And, uh, I, I, I'd go back to it and be like, I have no idea what pencils I used for this. That's exhausting. <laughs> okay. So yes. Yeah, so we're using these three here. So number 33, Prismacolor Coven is 902. Arteza is 32. And then number 35, Prismacolor Coven is 992. Arteza is 44. And lastly, oh, I didn't say it, so right up there. Okay, lastly, uh, number 56, Prismacolor equivalent is 10005, and Arteza equivalent is number 100. I mean, okay, let's just grab an example. Let me just grab one book off the shelf. Let's see, let's see, let's see. What's a good one? Mm. I'm trying to remember because I have a couple copies of the book, so I can't remember what I have a lot of stuff done. Like this is this is just Secret Garden. I don't remember what I have in this one. Well, this is a bad example. I did an entire post one time of like a bunch of work in progress to say I have because I've got more that are floating around. Like I said, I'm awful with them. I try to finish them. Really do. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and get these sharpened real quick. One second. Okay, that's one. And two. There are 35 people watching and like 14, time, 14 likes. I think people are forgetting to like, oh, <laughs> thanks. Thanks, Pat. Thanks, Epic. Y'all are so sweet. Okay, so we're gonna use these three colors here on this curved petal part, okay? There we go. And yes, I tend to turn my picture quite a bit just because it's so much easier. And in fact, we can lower this quite a bit more. Give me a second to focus it. There we go. Nice and close. There we go. Super zoom, as Mia says. <laughs> All right. So number 33, you can see it's a different, a little bit different kind of shade of the first blue that we used. But that's the nice thing about these coloring pages. If you don't really, you don't really have to uh, follow any hard and fast rules for coloring, you know? And then we're going to use number 35. It's kind of like a little teal color a little bit. All it took was to use caps. <laughs> there we go. All right. And then number 56. It's right there in the middle. And then what we can do is take our blue again. And see, now you guys are, can see all the super, super zoom here. Okay. We're going to add a little bit of this blue here. 
It's hard to hide any flaws when I got you guys this close. <laughs> I'd like to think, though, that even when I make a mistake on stream, it almost makes it seem, you know, more human. Plus, then you can see how I fix my own mistakes, you know? Okay. Now, if we want, we can go ahead and use number 73 again, which was our brown. And add a little bit of it in this corner, as well as a little bit in this corner. Okay, now let's zoom on out. There we go. Oh, thanks, Epic. That's what kind of camera you use. Um, so I just have a Rebel T3i. It's, I used to do photography, but it's got video capability. And so I hook it up to the PC um, through, oh, what's the program I use? It's like, it comes with it. It's EOS, like Rebel, it, it's, it's a Canon program. And then what I do is I have that video open and then I screen capture that and put it through uh, Streamlabs, which is what I use. This camera up here is just a simple little webcam. Uh, that was like, you know, 25 or something like that on Amazon. Hi, Vicky. Welcome. Hi, Rochelle. Um, but yeah, so I use a Canon T3i, uh, which is why I manually focus it. I've looked at autofocus cameras, but nothing I found can do something, you know, as close as I like. <laughs> okay. All right, let's work on, let's see, how long have we been? 53? Okay. All right, so let's work on a little bit, so you can tell I'm watching the video and not where I'm actually pointing. Let's work on this just a little bit, okay? And let's do, let's do kind of almost greenish sort of for these little middle petals, okay? So let's grab our, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Let's grab our number five and... Let's go ahead and use this one again, our number 56. Let's see, I use a Canon T6i, but I can't seem to zoom that close. Um, so it has a lot to do with my tripod. Here, I'm gonna see if I can. So you can see a little bit. I use a tripod that's sitting up here, and then I have my tripod inverted so that the camera's on there, just like that. So you can see, here, see how far up we can go. There we go, see? So that's how the tripod's set up. So I've got it inverted and when it's on its lowest portion, I can get this like literally, like it's practically six inches from the page. And I could always lower it more, you know, it has an ability to, to get refocused. But yeah, so I have sort of an inverted tripod and then it's literally directly above what I'm working on. I actually didn't realize my tripod could do that until I started messing with it. <laughs> Oh, and the T6i is nice. That's real nice. All right. So let's go ahead and come on back in. Now, I've experimented with boom arms and everything, but they just didn't seem as stable, and I had a lot of shaking. So that's when I discovered that I could do the inverted tripod. I'll have to find the kind of tripod I have. I'll, I'll link it to you, Pat. I just don't remember. It's been a long time. The brand is Dolica, D-O-L-I-C-A but yeah, it's super handy. I use one of the spring arm holders, but it's very shaky. Yeah, exactly. See, I wanted something that's more stable. Now, the downside is, is because of the legs, I'm limited, and you can kind of see, like a leg here and there, I'm limited as to how much space I have in between, which is why it's super handy that I uh, cut my pages out too. I have a tripod, you'll play with it? Okay, perfect. Super close-ups are such a helpful tool in a see how it just, Yeah, yeah, I think it I think it works out much easier. And also if I'm tripping over my words, it's because I have a cough drop in my mouth because I'm still getting over that cold and I'm trying real hard not to cough all over all of you. <laughs> Which I'm sure you probably appreciate. Nobody likes to be coughed on. Okay, so uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Let's get our equivalents real quick for those of you that are using something different. Okay, so we have number five. Prismacolor equivalent is 908, and Arteza is 41. And then number 56 again. So Prismacolor equivalent is 1005, and Arteza is 100. And then again, we have number 10. Prismacolor equivalent is 915, and Arteza equivalent is number 28. Okay. So 
to go on back in. Plus, it's one of the reasons that I wanted to do this camera too, because even though I'm in super close, you can kind of still see what I'm doing from far away. Okay, so we're going to start out with our darker one first. And I'm realizing I went over a little bit of blue. It would be a perfect opportunity for a fancy new tool that I was so excited. Oh, thanks, Pat. Yeah, well, I started doing them because I had a lot of people asking because I switched back and forth with pencils. And they're just like, oh, well, what's this one? What's that one? And I would stop and look it up. And so I was just like, you know what? I'm just going to make a chart and we'll, we'll make it work. I got a little bit of blue there. There we go. I finally got this one in the mail. I had heard so many good things about it and I was so excited. It's so perfect. My kiddos are like mesmerized by it. <laughs> okay. Sounds good, Audrey. Thanks for hanging out. Do this just a little bit tad lighter here. There we go. All right, and then number 56. Okay. And number 10. Now, I know it doesn't look as smooth being this close up, but because it's a small leaf, when you zoom back out, it does. Okay. And then what we're going to use, actually, instead of the brown, because we're doing greens, we're going to switch to a complementary red color. So we're going to use number 29. And the Prismacolor equivalent to that is 924, and Arteza is number 49. Could you tell us which camera are you using, please? Uh, yeah, Narita, I'm using a, a Canon T3i for the filming. And then I have just a standard uh, webcam right up here. <clears throat> there we go all right so we're gonna add just a little bit of that red right here I heard my phone go off but I buried it one sec kids are with the sitter so I have to make sure that everything is a-okay one second And nope, just regular notification. We're good. Okay. There we go. Just a little bit of that 29 there. We're going to press a little bit harder just to get a bit more of that blend there. Okay. Morning, Dora. It's only 8 a.m. Just woke up. Oh, Dora, you must be on the West Coast. There we go. Now, if you find that what you're doing, that doesn't look too bright on mine, but if you find that you look at yours and you're like, dang, man, that is so bright and vibrant compared to Phoenix. Okay, there you go. Uh, compared to, uh, you know, the lighter thing. You, there's a couple things you can do. Now, I tend to default to Prismacolor just because that's what I am most comfortable in. I'll grab it here. So you can do one of two things if you want to tone it down a little bit, okay? You have your white Ergo Soft, but you could just grab your, your favorite white one, but I like the Prismacolor because it tends to lighten things quite a bit and it kind of blends it at the same time, but not if I break the lead, so give me a second. <laughs> There we go. Okay. So what you can do, I'm going to go lay down. Thank you for the stream, lady. Sounds good, Joe Beth. Thanks so much for hanging out. You could always take your white and go over it a little bit just like that, but it doesn't, it doesn't tone it down as much as I'd like. So when you take your Prismacolor white, you can go over it just slightly and it almost turns it to a pastel. There we go. Also, you can take something wood if you go over on the edge and you want to uncover that. 
There we go. Ta-da! Girl coloring art, hello, good morning. All right, so let's do this other little one next to it and then we're gonna move on to the inner circle thing. I wanna really try and touch on as many parts of this picture as I can uh, so that we can see, you know, a little bit of, <coughs> a little bit of everything. I apologize for the coffee and those coming in. I'm getting over a cold. So yes, I'm trying to refrain from that. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and use our number five again. Okay. All right, there's our number five. Then we're gonna use our number 56. Okay. And we're going to use our yellow. Thank you, Kimmy. Yes, that's our Facebook group there, which is where we have a lot of our files. So if you um, would like to join it to have access to those, the summer colds are the worst. Oh, most definitely, Pat. Well, you know, it was the kids started school last week and immediately something came home and then our oldest one had it and she gave it to our youngest one and then they gave it to me. So, you know, it all comes around. <laughs> Almost at the tail end of it, though. All right, we're going to go. Oh. Forgot about the red. Forgot about the red. Thankfully, this past year hasn't too been, been too bad cold wise. Knock on wood. <laughs> Hi, Raven. Hi, Jenna. Welcome. All right, we're just lightening that a little bit with our prism color so that we, everything is even. All right, so let's zoom on out. All right, so those are our inner petals. So we've done one petal and the little inner petals here. So let's do a little bit of this inside here, okay? Now, for these little little circles, you can do a couple things. You can go ahead and try and color it with a pencil, or you can use something as simple as some glitter gel pens. Sometimes it's fun to just add glitter and don't make it too hard on yourself. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna skip these outer ones for now until we get these inner rings colored. And then we'll go back and we'll do these. I tend to save gel pen for last only because I am notorious for um, smearing it. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and grab. And if I'm ever quiet for a second, you see me just hovering. That's another reason why I put this up because you can see more of my hands when they hover. Uh, but it's mostly because like I'm stopping to read chat or figure something out or something. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and grab number 76. Okay. Hello, Tyler, welcome back. Um, and then let's grab number 49. Oh, gay, gay bitch. Is that, is that what your, is that what your name, is it Gabe or Gay Bitch? Or did I just pronounce something I should have not pronounced? <laughs> Okay, uh, and 16. Okay, so let's do these three colors here. All right, um, so let's go ahead and use number 76, which Prismacolor equivalent is 946. The router is holding up perfectly, Tyler. Uh, 76, so uh, Prismacolor is 946, Arteza is 118. And then number 49 is, let's see. Is 49, you know what? I think I wanna use this one too. So let's actually use these four here, okay? So number 76, 
So Prismacolor's 946 Arteza is 118. And then number 73, Prismacolor is 1033, Arteza is 27. And then number 49, Prismacolor is 1034, Arteza is number 10. And then number 10, Prismacolor is 915, and Arteza is number 28. Okay, let's see, where did I put, there it is. All right, so we're gonna get these sharpened up real quick. Yeah, perhaps, I don't know. I thought Raven was in here before, Kenny, but I'm not sure. I'll just call you Gabe, okay? I'm gonna call you Gabe. Okay, so there are all of our colors. Let's go ahead, zoom on back in. Okay. Okay, here we go. So we're gonna start with number 76. This kind of darker ring on the outside. Okay, and then number 73. And I'm just coloring real light here because we want to try and get that nice kind of gradient all the way down. Okay. It's all right, Jenna. Don't worry about it. We'll just, uh, we'll just, just, just ignore. We'll be good. We can always, we can always ban or time out or whatever if we need to. All right. And then number 49. Okay. And then... Number 10, here, okay. So we get kind of that simple, simple little glow. And if you want, you can go ahead and take your Prismacolor white too. Kind of soften it a little bit. Okay. And then when you zoom out, And get that kind of kind of glow. Sorry, I was pausing to to read. Okay, there we go. All right. Now what we can do if we want to do something a little bit different on the ring on the outside, rather than you know just dark to light. Let's see. Oh, thank you, uh, girl coloring art. Thank you so much. All right, so let's go ahead and do something slightly different. Just like this. We're using the same colors. You could do a little bit more red colors if you wanted to. But since we're doing a slightly different pattern on the ring around the outside, it shouldn't blend in too much. Looks beautiful that number 10 is magic color in Ergo Soft. Oh, most definitely is Narita. Like normally I would use, you know, like cream or even white and Prismacolor, but number 10 is my go-to uh, color to help with blending. I use it so much in a lot of my pictures, which I think kind of helps to create that kind of warm tone. Okay. And then number 49. Just a little bit because I want to make sure we have room for that yellow here. Okay. Pat, you should be celebrating today. Oh, thank you, Kenny. Pat, what's the, what's the celebration today? I know you said earlier you were going to have a long day, but is it uh, your birthday or something? All right. So there's a little bit there. We can zoom out. You can see the whole thing there. But I think we need to add just a little bit more contrast to that middle. So what we're going to go ahead and do 
And then we're gonna use number 29 like we used uh, earlier on the green flowers, okay? And we're just gonna add a little bit here, okay? A little bit there, okay? And there we go. Oh, is it her birthday? Oh, well, happy birthday, Pat. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wait for Pat to confirm birthday before I uh, sing happy birthday because I don't want to seem silly if it's not actually your birthday. It is your birthday. Okay. All right, Pat. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Pat. Happy birthday to you. Or maybe lesser known, but also just as awesome. This is your birthday song. It isn't very long. Yeah, just hands. <laughs> okay, so we colored a little bit of each. We're gonna just do some gel pen on this later. Let's jump to another part here so that we can keep moving on. Like, why don't we do a leaf here? Okay. <laughs> so, Pat, you uh, 26 again? Because I know I'm never a day over 30, ever, no matter what birthday it is. <laughs> all right we are going to get some greens and some reds okay so let's grab some greens we haven't used yet let's use these three here okay plus i think maybe this one or maybe some pink <laughs> yep there you go all right so let's go ahead and grab all right let's zoom on out Oh, I'm so glad, Girl Coloring Art. Although I feel silly calling you Girl Coloring Art. Is there another name or a pseudonym or, or not pseudonym, a, uh, what's the word, like an alias I can call you? I'm, I'm going to call you Nancy. No, not Nancy. I'll call you Michelle? No, let's see. I could just call you girl. Girly girl. <laughs> All right, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, let's go ahead and use, we're using number 38. Prismacolor equivalent is 105. Arteza is number 59. And then we have number 52. Prismacolor equivalent is 909. Arteza equivalent is 93. And then we have number 50. Prismacolor equivalent is 913. And Arteza equivalent is 42. Let's see, I get to see my sweet grandbaby girl today. The whole family should be wonderful. Oh, awesome, Pat. That sounds like a great day. And then I think we may or may not use number two. Prismacolor equivalent is 122. Arteza is number one. Okay. So we're going to start out with the outside of this. All right. Thanks for being here, Kimmy. Is there a special sharper for the Ergosoft? No, there is not. Okay. I've used, so I've used a number of things. Um, where is my little studler sharpener? I'm not using my little blue studler sharpener right now because the blades are dull. Um, but this sharpener here was gifted to me by one of our viewers. Her name's Donna. So this is super handy. Um, you can also use something just as simple as this. The studler sharpener does work really well. Not this one, but I, I honestly don't know where it's at right now because I haven't been using it. But it's just a little blue, um, double hold, uh, sharpener that works for it as well. But I try not to do anything that's going to create too long of a point because I don't want it to break off. I mean, I also have an electric pencil sharpener. But really, no, there's there's no special sharpener at all. Just basically whatever's going to give you a nice sharp point. What you're going to be looking for is something like this. The longer, the longer it is, that means you have a nice sharp braid, blade. blade. See, like these are nice and long, and that means that your that your uh, blade is super nice and sharp, and you're not going to get a lot of breakage. Once it starts shredding your pencil and stuff, that's a sign, or, or your tips are breaking more, that's a sign that your blade is dull. There we go. <clears throat> get some water here. Okay. But I definitely have different sharpeners for different pencils. Like I would never use something um, that makes a really long point with a Prismacolor only because Prismacolors need the support of the wood around them. And if it's just a long pencil point, that's inevitably going to break off. Sounds good, Kenny. Okay. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and use number 38 first. Okay, we're gonna start at the bottom here. A little darker at the base and then lighter as we go out. You always wanna make sure that when you're adding more colors you wanna have, you want it to end lightly so that you can blend them in nicely. Aw, thanks, Pat. Well, I'm glad. Well, it's always fun. I know I kind of fashioned it after uh, Johanna's, you know, tutorial and everything, but this is the first time we've ever done one of my drawings on stream, which is fun. And for those of you that are watching that are coloring along, you know, we've done these petals and everything, but now that you've seen how to do them, if you want to go ahead and continue on your own and like finish the flower, you feel free. Okay, I'm going to add a little bit of this darker green here. And then we're going to go ahead and use number 52. Going over that dark just a little bit. So Pat, what's your favorite flavor of birthday cake then? go. Good morning, Marsha. Welcome. <laughs> so glad you're here. I was a rainbow chip or you're wrong. Oh goodness, Tyler. <laughs> oh, I realized that wasn't centered. Sorry, folks. There we go. And we're going to be back on Wednesday too. We're going to keep coloring this. Like I said, my goal is to finish it on stream. And if you're wanting to color along with this too, uh, this is in a PDF file in our Facebook group too. You can do exclamation point Facebook. Chocolate cream cheese layered. Oh, very nice. I actually make a really good chocolate cake with a cream cheese frosting called a wacky cake and it's because it's made it doesn't have any eggs or anything in it it's it rises with baking soda and vinegar but it makes it a slightly heavier cake and it's super moist and then you could put like like raspberry filling or something in the middle and then I do a cream cheese frosting on top all right and then we're gonna use number 50 Go ahead and zoom on out. Yeah, it's super, super tasty. All right, so you can see we've got kind of basic colors here. Now, what we wanna go ahead and add, and I'm looking at this, and I think this red that I chose is almost too red. So we're gonna grab number 73 again, kind of what we used on the blue. What color pencils are you using? Colors or brands? So colors, um, I've been listing off the colors at the beginning, at the top, but the brand, Ooh, did I update this? Let's see if I updated this. Did I update that? I don't think I did. Here it goes soft. 
Nope, I didn't update that. Okay, well, exclamation point ergo soft, I think is, there you go. That is what I'm using. I'm using the 36 count of Stedler ergo softs there. I didn't update Nightbot. Oh, I gotta remember to do that. Um, but for this leaf, we use number 38, number 52, number 50, and we're about to use number 73. I'm worse with remembering to update Nightbot. Okay, so now we're gonna use number 73. We're gonna color a little bit on the sides here. Okay, same thing here. I'm telling you, it looks so much better when it's zoomed out. <laughs> Maybe we can get a little bit closer. Brand, yes, yeah, it's the Stedler Ergo Softs. Okay. Now let's go ahead and grab that one that I picked out before, the number two. It's kind of like a red orange, okay? Going over that brown just a tad. Okay. Now we're going to grab number 38 again. We're going to go over that brown just a tad for a second kind of darker layer. So yes, welcome Tammy. Hello. <laughs> In case I didn't say hi, I answered the question, but I realized I did not say hi. There we go. And we're going to add a little bit of that brown up here as well as some of that red. It's 5.19 PM here in Vienna. Oh, well, well welcome Cindy. Vienna, that's exciting. I've never been to Vienna. I haven't done a ton of traveling. I've been to Canada and I've been to Scotland. I mean, do you count layovers whenever you're flying anywhere? Because if you count layovers, technically I've been to Germany. Didn't see any of it except the airport, but I've been there. I don't know, maybe it doesn't count unless you like put your feet on the ground. <laughs> All right, and then number 52. I'd love to go back to Scotland too. There's so much there that I didn't get to see when I was there. You know, you're so limited sometimes. Ah, oh, you're sitting in a train. Ah, oh, there you go. <laughs> right? Yeah, all kinds of time zones. I think doing it in the morning opens up uh, the stream to so many more time zones that um, can work better rather than, you know, the late at night ones. I'm at work wishing I was <laughs> to color along. Aw, oh, you can always catch up later. No worries. Here we go. All right, so that's kind of our outer ring. Now what I wanna go ahead and do, slightly different color green for the inner. Okay, so let's grab our, kind of the some of the same colors that we used here, but we're gonna use number five, Prismacolor equivalent, oops, let's zoom out. Prismacolor equivalent is 908, Arteza is 41. Okay, so that's number five. Then we're going to use number 57 and our Prismacolor equivalent for 57. Prismacolor is 1097 and Arteza is 29. And then we'll use number 50, <clears throat> excuse me, 56, where Prismacolor equivalent is 1005 and Arteza is number 100. Aw, thanks, Cindy. It's the truth. I'd be so much rather 
stream in the mornings instead of evenings. Oh, most definitely. Yeah, I'm just so limited because with the kids and whatnot. Oh, definitely. Yeah, Cajun. So if you, I don't know if you're part of it already. I'll put the link here just in case anybody else wants to. That uh, exclamation point Facebook will pull up our command. Then you can join the Facebook group. I'll do a bunch of approvals or if Kimmy's around, um, she might do them too. Um, and then these are all in the files uh, of the Facebook group. I've got loads of different color charts in there. We've got some blank ones in case I never, I didn't cover a brand that you had or anything. So there's a ton of them in there. And then I just fill them out and I laminate them and then I got it coil bound at a local print shop. Okay. So now, makes it super handy. All right, so now we're gonna use number five. And go up the side just a little bit. At the top. Everyone gets an approval. There you go, Tyler. You get an approval. You get an approval. <laughs> Thanks, Tyler. Oh, no worries, Kimmy. I'm just glad you're here. Yes, Tyler can approve as well. And if you ever have any questions about anything, you can always uh, contact me or our mods. They're all pretty, pretty knowledgeable. Or, you know, you can post it in the Facebook group or whatever you want to do. Also, I have... There you go. Oprah, yeah. Instagram. You can also keep up with everything on Instagram as well. Okay, and again, we're using number five here. There you go. There we go. <laughs> I'm knowledgeable about everything but coloring. <laughs> that says, Kimmy, that happens here all the time. It really is a bummer. Yeah, we were having a lot of issues with it here. And then we went ahead and invested in a new router just because we were renting the one from the company. And it was, uh, we're using number 57, by the way. And it just was not working the way that it should. It was the internet was constantly cutting out. And it was just, oh, it was such a pain. So like I said, we finally invested in one and it has been, oh, a significant improvement. Blending that together there, just like so. Have to call the cable guy? Oh, yeah, that's no fun. Honestly, probably my least favorite thing in the world to do is to call customer service. I was having some computer issues yesterday, and so I had to go on the Microsoft, uh, you know, um, I didn't call them, but I had to, you know, the typing and chat and everything. And it's like, you know, you type in chat, you type out what your problem is, and then, you know, they pop on there and they're like, hello, how can we help you today? And it's just like, you know, first of all, I already told you how you can help me, you know, in the message that was in there. And then they spend five minutes getting back to you. And then all they say is, thanks for the information. Let me get back to you. And then they sit there and then it's just like, okay. And then they give you a suggestion of things that you already said that you already tried and you just waited five minutes. And then another like 10 minutes goes by and you don't hear anything. And it's like, oh my gosh, this is so painful. This is the worst customer service ever. I hate calling customer service so much. Hi, Kelly. Welcome. So glad you're here. I totally have a brand new respect for these pencils. I just didn't know how to use them. Oh, definitely, Pat. Yeah, you just light, light layers. That's all. All right. Now we're going to use number 56. If I can, I pass it off to my husband, especially if it's like the internet company or something or like our phone company. Like I just, oh, I have so little patience for them. 
Customer service rage, exactly, exactly. All right, we're gonna use number 10 too because I was hoping that the middle would be a little bit more yellow than it is. So we're gonna use a little bit of that and we're just gonna kind of go over it just a tad. Okay. Yeah, light hand is the key with these to be sure. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and use, uh, we're gonna use number 29. Add a little bit of that red to this. And why do we use red with green? Anybody? Class? No, just kidding. We use red with green because red is the complementary color of green. <laughs> Have to go, my lovelies. Thanks, Emily. Thanks for hanging out, Narita. Hope to see you on Wednesday. Oh, good job, Tyler. Good job. You get a gold star. You get a gold star. <laughs> I know that one. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, it's not nice thing about these pencils is it doesn't even have to be like a super complicated coloring. Press one, then press nine. Little crazy. Oh, exactly. Oh my goodness. Yeah, when you have to spend at least 15 minutes getting through the automated thing, if I can, like I try to automatically press zero, or if it's one of those, you know, voice recognition ones, I'm just like, customer service. I remember there was this time uh, I was doing, you know, my mother always taught me to have good manners and everything. And I was on the phone with somebody, and this is this was when I was younger, I was living at home, I think I was in high school or college or something. Um, but I was on the phone with customer service and it was just an automated thing. So I was trying to speak very clear and concise and uh, and really, you know, speak up. So to a normal person, it would sound like I was, you know, sounding kind of curt and short with whoever I was on. And so my mom was in the room and I said, I was, you know, giving me like, yes, no. And, you know, just saying those things. And after everyone, she's like, please, you need to say please. I was like, it's a robot. It's okay. And we're like, oh, okay. <laughs> Back now, I had to go make dinner prep. Sounds good, Lucy. Okay, um, let's add, I feel like it needs a little something else. So we're gonna grab our number 76 dark brown here. And we're gonna go ahead and fill this in just a tad on the bottom because it's, you know, technically nestled in under these petals. like so. There we go. <laughs> I met Lucy. There you go. What you making for dinner, Lucy? There we go. A little bit more of that shading so that when we zoom out there we go we got a little bit more all right let's see we have got 30 more minutes so let's jump on over to a different flower here okay let's do we'll save another big one for another one of the bigger streams and like i said if you're coloring along now that you've seen how we color one petal in these sections feel free to finish off your flower in fact i may I may do that. We'll see. I don't know. Okay, here's here's I'm putting the question towards towards chat. Um, since it's taken us this long just to color these little bits, and we've gone over how to color, you know, petal the inner petals and this part and the leaves. Do you want me to color the rest of these off stream so that we can keep moving on other things for the other streams? Let me know. I'll let chat catch up for that. In the meantime, let's go ahead and color this one right here. Okay. Aw, thanks, Pat. All right, what colors haven't we used yet? We haven't used some of these pinks. We're gonna use that, okay? All right, so we're gonna use number, oh, there it is, number 61. Oh, fun, Kelly, that'll be great. Leftover chicken pot pie, oh, nice. <coughs> number 20. We may end up using a little bit of number 25 and we will most definitely be using number 10. Okay, so let's zoom out, take a look at our chart real quick so you can have the equivalents. All right, so number 61, Prismacolor equivalent is 995, Arteza is 86. Then we have number 20, 
Prismacolor equivalent is 993, Arteza is 26. Then we have number 25, and Prismacolor equivalent is 929, and Arteza is number 83. Then we have number 10, Prismacolor equivalent is 915, and Arteza is 28. Okay. So let's zoom on back in here. See, and these smaller ones, this is really where uh, these Ergosofts shine, to be sure. Put a whole chicken in the crock pot. Oh, nice, Kelly. That sounds great. I should do that. I'm having barbecue today, chicken, corn on the cob, squash, zucchini, sweet potatoes on the pit, and pork and beans, and potato salad. That sounds great, Pat. So did they make you that chocolate cake with the cream cheese frosting? It is your birthday after all. <laughs> all right. So number 61. There we go. That kind of homemade. Oh, definitely. Oh, not store bought either. Oh, there you go. There you go. Yeah, homemade chicken pot pie. That's awesome. Oh, a dry rub. That'd be nice. Oh, they're making me hungry. Color a few of those. Now let's move on to another color here. See, so sure, well, he loves to entertain. When Mary and Tanya came to visit, he had every meal plan and prepared for them. Oh, that's awesome! Yeah, that must have been such a fun visit. All right, number 20. Real light lakes. We're going to add that yellow there. Oh, I'm so glad, Pat. I've been using my fine liners lately and secret garden coloring all the really small pictures. That's awesome, Kelly. Be sure you'll have to post the pictures in the Facebook group. Now we're going to use our number 10. Okay. Now we're going to move this a little bit more here. Okay. Now let's go ahead and grab our number. Let's see. No, I don't want that one. Let's use number five. Okay. Tad bit of green here. Now, Pat, did you know them outside of the coloring community? Did you know them before this or did you just meet within the coloring community? Now we're going to go back to our number 61. Oh, thanks, Rochelle. Oh, that's so awesome, Pat. 
It's a great little community. I've met so many wonderful people. Uh, it is 10.37 a.m. here, Kelly. All right, so then number 25. Have a little bit of that there. Just a tad. Okay, eleven thirty-seven for you. Oh, there you go. Hi, Nick and Tina. Do you want to be part of the Spooktober colorathon? Uh, yeah, sure. What's the guidelines for it? Just coloring a Halloween picture. And when is it? Because if that's the case, I have got a perfect picture of it. Let's see. Uh, spirit animals. Here we go. There's a really good picture in Spirit Animals. Let's see if I can find it here. Oh, there we go. Finally finished the Miss Frizzle page. <laughs> okay, fun fact. Actually, you know what I discovered when I was coloring it? Uh, she had no eyebrows, so I gave her eyebrows. Also, the pattern on the scarf was something I added. But if it's Miss Frizzle, she has to have pattern stuff. Oh, yeah, definitely, Nick and Tina. Then, yeah. Definitely, definitely. Let me pull up a page here. Because I was looking at it and I was just like, oh, man, this would be perfect. So, let me... Oh, welcome to our coloring family, uh, Bobby, Bobby Lees. Welcome, welcome. Right on the magic school bus. Exactly, Tyler, exactly. Let me zoom out for just a sec here. Readjust just a tad. Okay, here we are. Ch -ch 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 -ch. Let's free focus here. So this is from Spirit Animals. I was thinking <clears throat> that either one of these would be perfect. Right, Beth Ann? Right? I couldn't visualize anything else. But yeah, so I was thinking one of these pages would be perfect. But, um, Nicotina, send me, uh, send me the schedule. If I can get two days, that'd be awesome, but I don't know how full it is, uh, how full it is yet. But yes, yeah, send me the schedule and I'll see where I can fit myself in. But yeah, most definitely, I want to be a part of that for sure. Yeah, here we go. Here's the full picture. Yeah, when I looked at her, like, now Miss Frizzle doesn't wear glasses, but it's just, I saw her... And I just, I couldn't see anything other than red hair, you know? <laughs> All right, here we go. Let's zoom back in here. Lower this just a tad. Here we go. Get this back in focus. There we go. Perfect. Let's see, actually, Nick and Tina, I can't remember. I don't think you do Instagram, right? I'm gonna give you my email. Emilyillustrator.com. Okay, perfect. Uh, Nick and Tina, you can email me there too. Okay, uh, let's see. Let's grab number 20. You know, and I'm, I don't know if I missed it or anything, but um, what was the consensus, chat? Do you want me to finish the, this off stream or do you want me to keep coloring? Since we've seen how to do a petal and some of the leaves and stuff, would you like me to finish this so we can move on to something else? Or would you like me to uh, color the rest of it on stream? So I'm kind of hopping around because I wanted to make sure we could do a little bit of everything um, so that, you know, we can keep, keep different things going on here. There's our little... Our little pink petals. Thanks, Rochelle. All right, let's color a couple of these leaves. Move on, see more, please. Okay, perfect. Then that's what I'll go ahead and do. Because now that we've seen how to do it, then uh, I can finish this off. Because there's still plenty to color on there. I mean, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight more flowers to go, plus the background. So move on. Okay, perfect, perfect, perfect. Then yeah, I'll go ahead and finish this other flower and these leaves off stream and then we can keep, we can keep rolling on, shall we? All right, let's go ahead and use number five now. That's what I was thinking. I just always want to make sure that I ask before I just assume I can move on because I don't want anybody to come back and be like, hey, I wanted to watch that. I'm like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Here 
There we go. All right, and then we're gonna use number, 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 number 50. A little bit up to the edge there. Okay, now we're going to use our number 10. There we go. Nice bright color there. And then we're going to grab our number 29. I'm used to watching playbacks if I need another review. Oh, there you go. Perfect, Pat. Number 29. Here we go. A little bit of that red there. Be a smidge on the other side too. There we go. Come zoom on out just a tad. Gives you a little bit of shading. All right, let's do these bigger leaves behind here, okay? All right, so we're gonna use number 38. Now I know I'm not reading off the equivalents, but I think I've read them out of, uh, multiple times. And plus, if you want, you can download that file um, in the Facebook group as well, so. Or if you specifically wanna know, just ask and I can read it off again. Number 38. Give me says, yay. <laughs> there we go. All right, so that was 38. And then we're gonna grab number 52. And then we're actually going to grab our kind of blue green number 35. There we go. Just a little bit there. Okay. And then we're going to grab our, actually, not yellow. We're gonna grab number 56. There we go, see it looks so much brighter in the video than it is, I swear it's toned down a little bit. But just the same, we're gonna use our white, our Prismacolor white, to kind of blend and soften it a little bit. If it ever comes out too bright, you can always grab a Prismacolor white to kind of tone it down and get more of a pastel look. Yes, today is Pat's birthday, everyone. She's 26. <laughs> All right, now we're gonna use number 29. go. All right, that's some nice color to it. Okay, so let's see here. And for these back pedals, ooh, you know it'd be kind of fun? Let's actually grab our purple, okay? All right, so let's see. So we have number six. I haven't read off the equivalent for this yet, so I'll go ahead and do that. All right, so number six, Prismacolor equivalent is 932. Arteza equivalent is number 88. Okay, so let's go ahead and, well, let's center this first off, make that a little bit easier to see. Okay. And some purple here. There 
we go. There we go. All right, then let's go ahead and use our number 61. Okay, then let's go ahead and use our number 10. Go ahead and grab my Prismacolor white, tone it down just a smidge. Okay, there we go. Nice little kind of pastel looking flower. And I know we're covering up these dots that are on the petals, but one of the things that we can do when we go back is we'll use gel pen and we'll go over those dots. So it'll look kind of like that, see? All right, let's grab our dark brown. So our number 76. Okay. There we go. A little bit of that there. And now we got a little bit of that shadowing behind the petals. Sounds good, Kenny. All right. Let's see, let's go ahead and do this one here. Using number fifty two, a little bit of that number thirty five, adding some of that blue a little bit. Okay, leaving a tiny little space for some yellow. And then, what did we do? We used white, right? There we go. All right, and then we used red here. There we go. Aw, thanks, Pat. And Pat. Two Pat. Thanks, Pat and Pat. <laughs> All right, let's see. So now let's go ahead and use number five. number your husband's name is also pat <laughs> pat three pat cubed oh you get all you together and you're pat cubed the power of three the power of pat <laughs> pat times three the pat triplets okay i'm gonna stop now <laughs> okay number 52 pat and pat that's cute well, is like Pat for you short of short for Patricia, and like Pat for him is short for Patrick or something? I'm beginning to think I didn't actually use this color on these. See, that's what happens. There you go. All right, then number fifty. And 
I'm yellow. There we go. We'll put a yellow there. And then some of that red again. I'm Patricia, and he is actually a Luther, but got the nickname Lil Pat after his dad when he was growing up. Oh, how funny! <laughs> it's a great icebreaker when you guys first started dating, I'm sure. Nice to meet you, Pat. I'm Pat. <laughs> it's like that cartoon, Ed, Ed, and Eddie. There you go. Pat, Pat, and Patty. <laughs> That's so funny though, that's great. What a great story too. All right, there we go. So we were just using that red there. All right, so I'll be honest, my throat's starting to hurt a little bit just from the chatting and getting over the cold. So I'm gonna call it here. I go pick up the kiddos, ooh, stretching, stretching, stretching. Okay, so here is what I'm going to be doing off stream to catch up for next time. Here's what'll be done by Wednesday, okay? So. I'm not going to do the middle of this flower because we haven't covered that yet, but what I am going to do is the rest of these pink petals, okay? I'm going to do the rest of these blue petals, these inner green petals, and this green petal here because they're already things that I've already colored. I'm not going to color anything new that I haven't colored already, okay? So homework for Wednesday will be petals, inner petals, leaf, pink petals, okay? And that's where we'll be at when we start on Wednesday, okay? All right, so don't forget to check the exclamation point Facebook. Don't forget to check the Facebook. Um, if you're not following us on Instagram, drop a follow there. That's where I keep everybody posted on everything going on, Facebook and Instagram. Um, Facebook is where we've got all of the files. We've got the free printable PDF of this if you're wanting to follow along. Um, yeah, so Wednesday we'll pick up with this. And Friday we are going to be working on our, let's zoom out a little bit. Can't wait to have ink so I can color along with it. Oh, for your printer. I got you, got you, got you. And Friday, we're going to be working on this work in progress I've got going on. I don't know if I'm going to be working on it in the meantime, um, but there is plenty to work on for this. So we're going to be working. <laughs> Thanks, Tyler. Uh, we're going to be working on this one on Friday, okay? So that's where we're at. Thank you, everyone, for coming to hang out. This was, I think, a great start to our morning streams. And I will see you all on Wednesday. So thank you, thank you for everyone who hung out. Bye. Also another thank you to all of our super chatters today. That was amazing. Thank you so, 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 so.